Well, good morning. It is time for Cup of Hope. I am Stephanie Winslow, and I'm grateful to be with you this morning to bring to you a message from the Word of God. Let's lift up our cups together today and ask the Lord to fill us up today with His hope that He has in store for us through the power of His Word. I want to uh, continue this message, this series that we've been walking through since the beginning of December. It's all about Advent, and it's hard to believe, but we are only a week away from Christmas today, only one week away from celebrating. Um, I know most of us probably have some family time scheduled or um, traveling maybe even, and just time set aside to remember and celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus. But along with that celebration of Jesus comes time together, the, the family connections, time with friends, um, time with people that we uh, esteem and hold close to our hearts. And along with that often comes a little bit of um, tension, dare I say. Um, along with the good comes a little tension in relationships. But th this is why this timing is so impeccable for us to study this word from 2 Peter verse 1, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 7a. And this is a conglomeration of steps, I'll call them building blocks, that Peter has instructed us through the, the beginning of this chapter in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1. He tells us that we were, are in verses 3 and 4 that we've been given everything because of the spirit that's alive in us to live to have a divine nature that we can live according to uh, the way that God has desired for us because of the spirit at work within us. Good morning. Thank you for joining. Um, and today we're going to walk through this series so that we don't just dive right into this and not have a reference point for it. But the building blocks of the divine nature that we have everything that we need to live a life that is godly, a life that is upright, a life that brings glory and honor to God, that it starts with faith. And with faith, we're adding to that virtue and virtue, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control, patient endurance, and then patient endurance, godliness, that's this reverence for and respect for the authority of God. And then to that, we're adding this idea of brotherly love. So chapter, or for, excuse me, chapter one, verse seven says, and to your godliness, brotherly kindness. So add to your godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness. Uh, this word brotherly kindness in the Greek is Philadelphia, like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love in Pennsylvania. It is the affection for your brothers or the idea of cherishing your brother, cherishing your brother and sister, cherishing the, the brothers and sisters, the friends in your life, not just blood relatives, but those who God has put around you, cherishing those people uh, as uh, with a level of, of affection for them. And as I was preparing for this message, one of the, the things that struck me was this idea that relationships with other people are really a get to, not a have to. Relationships are a get to, not a have to. So as we are um, walking in relationship with people at any level, realizing that God has put us in a place that we get to do life with people. And he's put us in community for a very specific purpose. And oftentimes it is so that we get to, uh, to share what God is teaching us with those around us, that we get to comfort others as he has comforted us. But there's also a great deal that we get to learn from other people. By, as, as we kind of sit back and, and look and take note of what's going on and how people are navigating through life, we get to learn and glean a lot from the people that we are doing life with. One of the things that I love most about John Maxwell and being one of his coaches is his teaching that talks about that he puts a 10 on the head of every person that he's around. So if I'm walking through the grocery store or I'm in a boardroom having a meeting or I'm dealing with my family, it's just this idea of placing the number 10 on top of the forehead of the people that we're dealing with. And that that's a reminder that 
And people are valuable. And if I value people at the level of 10, on a scale of one to 10, if I'm saying that they are valuable to the level of 10, because that's the kind of level that God places on them. If God saw fit to create someone, it's because he's, he chose to put value in them. And if God thinks that they're valuable, who am I to think any other than that, anything different than that? And as we walk through this life, and we encounter people that maybe they're they're a little bit challenging to love. They're hard to get along with. Uh, those people, even though they may be difficult to get along with or hard to live with or challenging, it doesn't mean that we can treat them with a different level of value and respect. That's this whole idea of adding to our godliness, brotherly kindness. And... I think the question that I've been wrestling with for myself as I've been going through these verses is that how do I connect with people? How do you connect with people? So if you could just take this message home to yourself, have a little self-reflection is how do I connect with people? Am I, when I meet someone, when I'm in a relationship with them, am I more concerned with, with finding out what's wrong with them or what's right with them? What's wrong with them or what's right with them? Am I more interested in telling them what they're doing wrong or what they need to correct or what they could be doing better? Am I more interested in pointing out those, what I'll quote unquote, character flaws? Am I more interested in finding and figuring out those things or am I more interested in finding out what's good with them, what they're doing well, where they're flourishing, where they're doing things that maybe are not the way that I would do them, but they are working for them. And so I believe that God today wants to teach us through his word, this notion of brotherly kindness, that it's more brotherly kindness is realizing that it's a get to, that I get to be in relationship. And that will kind of shift perspective to say that these relationships are really appointed by God, that he has placed people in my life that, I, that need to love me and that I get to love. Then it's this idea of placing value on people because God calls them valuable. And if we take it another level deeper, it's realizing that as I connect with people, if I'm more concerned about what's right with them, there's so much that I can learn from them. There's so much that I can glean from that relationship. There's so much that I get to pour into that relationship and that I can understand and focus in what's right with them instead of what's wrong with them. And then the final thing that I want to leave you with is how do I see these people in my life? How do you see the people in your life? Are you looking at them by their past mistakes? Uh, are you looking at them because of the scars that they've walked through? Are you looking at them um, from their class, their age, their status, their socioeconomic place? Um, are you looking at them and, and judging them because of where they're at in life. Maybe they're not as far down the road as you are. Maybe they're not, uh, they have, don't have it all together. Maybe they're struggling with the same struggle over and over and over again, and you're casting judgment on that. Today is a day that we're gonna set aside to focus on brotherly kindness. How can you bring kindness to the world today, to the people around you? How can you share the love of Christ with those in your life? And maybe it's time that, that we get real with how we treat people and realize that we have so much to give and so much to gain by being in relationship with others. God has called us to relationship. Let's wrestle with, let's figure out what it, who, who we're in relationship with and why God has us there. And what is it that he wants us to give to the people in our lives today? Is it a word of encouragement? Is it a high five? Is it a, a warm hug? Is it, you know, just walking alongside of somebody in something difficult that they're walking through because we have also walked a similar road. 
whatever it is, however that display of brotherly kindness is to go out from you today, I know that God will bless it. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for this time together. And I pray, Lord, and I thank you that you have given us everything that we need to live a life of brotherly kindness to those around us. You have equipped us, you have called us, you have set us apart, you have given us your divine nature to live a life of brotherly love to those around us, Father. I thank you that you have spoken your word in our lives. I thank you that you are calling us, you're setting us apart, that you're shaping and molding us for the purposes that you have created us. I pray, God, today that we would be lights in the darkness of this earth, that wherever the soles of our feet would tread, that we would bring about, that we would usher in your spirit, that we would usher in your presence, Lord, and that we would usher in brotherly kindness, brotherly love, this idea of Philadelphia. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you for being with me today. Be blessed, be well, and Lord willing, I will see you back here on Wednesday. Bye-bye.